Hello, everyone. Um, so today we're going to talk about collaborating between business, uh, different business units in UX design. <coughs> so a little bit about me before we get started. I am a senior UX designer currently working at PwC, which is a consultancy. Um, I have a background in psychology. At some point in my life, I thought I was going to be a therapist, but somehow ended up in UX design, so that's interesting. Um, I'm definitely a mixed background designer, so I've done the boot camp thing, I've done the master's thing, I've done kind of independent learning, so I've done a few different kind of techniques to get to where I am right now. Um, and I'm also a mentor on the ADP list. Um, I've mentored over 100 designers at this point, so it's been a really rewarding experience. Um, so today we're going to talk through a little bit of an intro, some challenges, and some techniques you can actually use to implement some of the uh, methods that I'm going to talk about. So um, to it, so my personal experience. So I kind of mentioned mixed background. Uh, so I was actually the first designer that PwC hired into the current team that I'm working in. Uh, so you can imagine that comes with its fair share of challenges and also kind of some successes that I can point to. So you can see this is me kind of pushing this ball up um, a hill. And there was a lot of kind of effort that I had to put in order to kind of get myself to a recognition point. Um, There's also a lot of kind of uh, collaboration that I took advantage of in different business uh, capacities because it led to my growth, it led to impact. So all these things really like were super, super important. And I think it's one of the things that helped me grow most as a designer, which is when I started kind of going outside of myself and meeting with different business teams and thinking, how can I actually kind of work with you and collaborate with you? So um, eventually it kind of came to a point where kind of similar to this, uh, I was kind of putting in that effort, it was going through different stakeholders and kind of coming back to me. So it almost was like this, you can think of it like a pendulum, uh, I think this is called like a Newton's cradle. Um, so it was a little bit like this, like after a while, once I started collaborating with different business units, it felt a lot more kind of collaborative. Like it felt like I was part of the team, I wasn't just an outsider, it was like something that was part of the business. So I just want to touch on what the definition is. And there's probably a bunch of different definitions. I really like this one. So uh, working across different departments and teams on a specific goal uh, or project, and it also leverages the different uh, skill sets and knowledge that each team member has. Um, so you're able to brainstorm together, solve difficult problems, and achieve better outcomes in an organization. So these are some uh, different types of cross-collaboration. Um, there's definitely more, like if you like Google, there's like a bunch, but I felt like these ones were more related to the design side. So interdisciplinary collaboration, which is where you take different types of skill sets and bring them together. And you know, you might have different responsibilities on a project and you're able to collaborate from there. External collaboration. So this is potentially you maybe going outside of your company, maybe talking to um, customer service teams or even your customers directly through like surveys to kind of understand how can you kind of better serve them. Um, community collaboration, so things like this, right? Like meeting designers from other backgrounds, maybe starting a community of practice within your organization so you can kind of learn from each other. And then strategic alliance, so two companies coming together kind of collaborating on a specific goal or project. So here are some of the challenges, and there's a lot when it comes to challenges with cross-collaboration, especially depending on your organization. So just, these are the six that I'm going to focus on today. And I want to talk through the problem and then potential methods that maybe you can use to alleviate the problem. So the first one is conflicting priorities. So you might have um, competing objectives. It makes it difficult for UX designers to implement solutions. Um, and make impact, which is the most important thing. Uh, so in order to establish a, a clear product vision and communicate, you need to kind of do that within the whole team. Like everybody needs to be on the same page. Um, you can also create a collaborative product roadmap. So that includes the business needs, not just like the user needs and the technical needs, but it also talks about the business side of it. Like why is this happening? Um, and then also creating an environment where you know, you have open collaboration and you're able to actually uh, address the rationale behind those decisions that you're making. Uh, so another one is complex processes. So um, this, this is definitely something that um, I've dealt with in my career so far. 
So having complex approval processes where it's difficult to deliver on a project um, and it kind of can slow down some design activities. So in this case, really figuring out what are the different stakeholders and who are the decision makers and what are their processes to really make sure that you're actually able to um, make those decisions on time. Uh, and also seek guidance from past work. So I, I'm not sure if how many of your teams have kind of like a wiki style resource uh, site, but anything where you can kind of document what is the process, um, who do I speak to, and kind of maybe you have some sort of a complicated risk process, for instance, like who is it that you kind of go to for that. Um, and sometimes depending on your company, you might have these documented somewhere. And um, also talk to the relevant teams early and often, just in case, because it could, again, be very complex. So it's good to know what's going on. Uh, lack of design awareness. This is probably my favorite challenge, because I think, <laughs> um, I, sound, I know that sounds weird, but I think this is the one that I think has like made my career so far. Like Raising the awareness of design and why it's so important is probably like one of the major things you can do, especially as you get into more like senior leadership kind of um, areas of your career. So uh, you might be getting some pushback, maybe there's a lack of understanding, people don't really get it. Uh, so offer training sessions, so I did this a lot, uh, especially early on, uh, doing some lunch and learns, kind of having people come into different design sprint workshops and stuff like that. It really helped um, kind of collaborate. And also encourage shadowing opportunities. So do you have any kind of people that maybe are interns or like, associates that are coming from different teams that might be interested in what you do and is that a way to kind of bridge the gap between two departments and also invite stakeholders to design reviews i know that this is probably the most daunting thing um because you know from our perspective like you're kind of having a stakeholder like kind of poke around with what you're doing but the value of this is like super super important um and also if you can uh, attach it to some sort of roi metric that's even better um and if you can even share that on a company chat or share your successes, um, that's super, that can actually help a lot as well. Uh, resource allocation. So you have competing budgets, you have resources uh, in other departments, and maybe it can uh, affect the quality of the work that you're doing. So attend resourcing calls. Um, if you have any kind of leadership in your team, like UX managers or DevOps people, they should definitely be kind of going to resourcing calls to understand like, hey, what are the high priority projects that we can be working on? Uh, also agree on the budget allocation across the departments, kind of agree that early so that you can resource the, the right uh, team members. Also, I know that this is kind of controversial, but sometimes you need to go external. Um, early on in my career at PwC, we, we did have to go external for a few things because we just didn't have the numbers. Like I mentioned, I was by myself. So uh, sometimes you just need that support. Um, and also review the capacity of the team early, kind of forecast your capacity as well and your availability. The next one is scalability of design. So uh, ensuring consistency across the, the work that you're doing, different product and services, um, develop a skills matrix and design playbook for the design team. Uh, this is something we're working on now. Um, invest in a comprehensive design system with a development team. And I say invest because it's definitely an investment and like you have to dedicate time to it. Uh, set up a reoccurring product design review to promote consistency. We kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, also thinking about you know, investing in a research repository to kind of store those findings and it also makes sure that you're not repeating the same kind of research over and over again. You can actually look back. Uh, provide training opportunities to fill those gaps. So don't just say you're going to do L&D, like actually invest in it and make sure that the people that need certain skills to be filled, they're actually getting those opportunities to fill them. So uh, the last one here is silo teams. So you might be by yourself, you might have a few people in your team. Um, you know, there might be teams that are like sitting in different parts of the organization and it can lead to a lot of communication issues. Um, so the method you could use for this is organize and participate in company-wide events. And um, usually these are like, especially for bigger companies, these are usually pretty advertised. You can find these pretty readily. Uh, also look uh, to create a team site. So this could be like a way to actually market yourself and also share examples of the work that you've done. 
and uh, set up recurring meetings with adjacent teams to share updates and um, seek opportunities for collaboration. So I wanted to get into the UX team structure because I think it's really important to realize like, yes, there's definitely challenges, there are definitely things that you can do to alleviate those challenges. But what about like your team? Like the structure of your team, does it actually allow for collaboration? So three uh, team structures here, we have centralized, decentralized, and matrix. So I'm gonna go through each one of them. So centralized UX team is where you have a UX manager, you have different uh, UX team consultants, individuals that would then get allocated out to different teams. So you would typically find this more in like an agency or consultancy model. And some of the benefits of, of this is that the UX manager is the champion for the team, they're responsible for allocating out work to the team, um, so it's like really kind of top heavy in a way. Uh, they're also the designers are more generous, so they have like a wide range of UX skills because they need to be kind of allocated out at certain times for different teams. Um, and also they might be working on different types of products and they get a chance to actually do a huge breadth of work. So the challenges of this is that you're a cost center to the business, so constantly having to kind of prove your value is something that you can definitely struggle with. Um, there might be a lack of shared understanding and in-depth product knowledge because you might be allocated to a team for, let's say, six months, um, and then you might work on something else. So sometimes that knowledge sharing doesn't really happen. Uh, and also resource constraints, like you know, you might be getting a lot of requests at one point, maybe not for others. So kind of managing that pipeline is important. So decentralized. So this is typically what you find in more of like a tech company, product company. You have kind of your uh, verticals, you have product teams that kind of have their own, you know, you have a dedicated team for, you know, UX, product management, everything. And in this case, so designers are part of the product team and they become more of SMEs in that specific area. Um, they're usually involved more regularly in the design team. Um, so there's a little bit more of an understanding um, of what designers do and they're actually part of the product team. And some of the challenges is that you might be in a team where there's like 10 developers to one designer. So that can be really difficult because it actually doesn't allow you time to improve on things like research and design because you're just over and inundated, right? You have so much to do. Um, and also there's a lack of continuous improvement of that because as, as we saw, like, you know, you're kind of working in your own little silos. So maybe these teams aren't actually collaborating with each other. So I think that can be a challenge. And the last one. So I think this one's the most interesting and I haven't really seen too many examples of this, like in my real world kind of um, research. So in this one, you have team leads that kind of oversee different UX designers and then you have like a UX manager who also kind of oversees it. So the way that I think of this is almost like a squad model. Um, so the benefits of that is that you have kind of two people looking at UX uh, from a, a lead perspective along with a UX manager. And uh, the product managers from different teams can kind of see the value of UX because they're getting to see like from that squad to this squad, like what's going on and you know, they can pick up on things. And it's also very flexible. Um, so the challenges with this is it's really difficult to organize meetings and uh, priorities. Um, and the designer actually has to report to two different managers. So that gets kind of complicated. Uh, whereas maybe like the team lead is looking day to day and the UX manager is like overall. So you kind of have to you know manage this. So I'm really curious for the people in the room, what is your team structure? So are you, and if you could raise your hand, so if you're a centralized team, I'm curious. Okay. Awesome. And then what about decentralized? Okay, so there's a lot more people with that, if that makes sense. Uh, what about matrix? Anybody? Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna have to like talk to you later because I'm really curious about this one. Um, what about other? Is there anyone that doesn't fit any of these three buckets? Oh, okay, interesting. Ooh, okay, definitely need to talk a little bit more later because I'm, I'm very curious. So all this to mention that, you know, you can imagine some of these structures allow for more collaboration and some don't. So as a designer, one of the things you can do is talk to leadership and kind of say to them, like, hey, we're in a centralized model. Like, here's some of the challenges that we could be dealing with. 
how can we overcome them and kind of collaborate better. Um, it's one thing to notice the challenge, but it's also another to kind of realize like it's also maybe an environmental thing. So I'm going to get into a little bit of the implementation, like how you can kind of go about this. Um, so we talked about kind of individual things, we talked about the team, and I would love to talk about also like the company structure. So uh, you can see here, and you can like read this a little bit more, this is um, an article, I can like post it after, uh, where you know, you might have open participation and you might have a flat organization and that kind of also allows for a lot more collaboration because anyone can propose anything and they can offer solutions. Whereas if, let's say you're in a hierarchy uh, organization and it's more of a closed participation, you might not actually get that collaboration. So also keeping this in mind, like from you know a company-wide perspective, like are we able to actually have the right kind of culture to do collaboration? And so identifying opportunities, this is just a summary of everything we spoke about, um, you know, attending events, getting more networking opportunities, meeting with different uh, departments around your company, sharing case studies of the work that you're doing, examples to stakeholders, and uh, alignments, so reviewing the KPIs of senior leadership and strategically aligning your team's goals to theirs. So here's some criteria that you can use. These are some questions you can ask yourself when you're presenting with some collaboration opportunities. So um, you know, how significant is this? Will this collaboration foster knowledge between departments? Does this collaboration have the potential to drive innovation? Uh, can the results of this collaboration be scaled across the organization? And how complex is this collaboration in terms of coordination and execution? Uh, so yeah, these are, this is again a summary of everything we talked about, some of the benefits that you can have when you're uh, cross-collaborating, increased awareness, reducing duplication of effort, ability to share resources and standardize your delivery, consistency across product branding, breaking down silos between departments, um, encouraging innovation, continuous improvement, and as products evolve, having the ability to scale within the existing ecosystem. That's everything I have for you. I'm not sure how much time I have, but any questions from anyone? Yeah, we definitely have time for a couple of questions. But before that, put your hands together. Anyone with a question? Who wants to be the confident first question of the whole event? There's one here. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you so much for um, all the info you presented. I was just wondering how you see these sort of suggestions or responsibilities that you're recommending split between like a senior UX role, which you seem to be having now, versus head of product or like design leadership and stuff. Like, do you actually do all of that as a senior UX designer, or is some of that the role of your manager? So I think it's kind of a hybrid thing. I think I have kind of a unique case because like I mentioned, I've been there for a while. So maybe some of these things are overlapping because of that. But I do think that, let's say you're a senior UX designer and you're thinking of like growth in your career. Like some of these things are things you should definitely talk to leadership about because it shows that you're thinking strategically and you're thinking about the business, right? And that's like one of the core things as a UX lead to do. Sorry, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Hi. Um, so my question is around your, you said your favorite challenge was raising design awareness within a firm. Um, have you got like a standout activity that you did that really had an impact within PwC? Mm. So when I first joined, I've been at PwC for a little, like around six years now. In the beginning, um, yeah, nobody really even knew what UX was. So even me doing a simple uh, slide deck of saying, what's the difference between UX and UI? And then even having a hands-on prototyping workshop really worked out well. Um, people were like really excited about it at that point. Um, so I, I would think like, even things like hackathons are a good idea. Um, we've been doing more of those uh, because it brings like different parts of the business together. Um, and you can also like show off your skills, right? Which is really cool. Thank you. Uh, they're all coming out of the woodwork now, look. <laughs> Alright, we'll do one last one, but then we're going to move on. I'm going to come here. Sorry. Um, thank you for a great presentation. Um, 
Do you have any tactics or sort of coercing other teams, departments into sort of a similar way of thinking that there is benefit in collaborating, whether that's in meetings? Um, I know certain teams might not enjoy participating in meetings that often. Is there a way that you can encourage them into the world of design? Mm. Ooh, this is a hard one. That's a hard question. Um, I mean, uh, see, the thing is, so because we work in a consultancy, it's like very, very different depending on the kind of line of service you're working with. So it's such a range. Like, I can't answer that for one type of uh, department because everyone has like their own priorities and stuff like that. It almost make, feels to me that if someone's interested in what you do, like definitely embrace them and make them an advocate for what you do because, um, yeah, you're only one person, so you're gonna need people to support you. In terms of actually like forcing people, it's like it's difficult because you can't really like, unless you're in more of a leadership position and you kind of have a little bit more of that um, advantage to kind of tell people like, hey, this is an important meeting because this, you know, goes back to a business objective or it goes back to like a company objective that we're trying to do. That's like the only way I could think of, of kind of aligning it and making sure that people take it seriously. Like I would go back to like business, if anything. Thank you very much for all your questions. Uh, again, once again, put your hands together for Jeffrey.